Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In this video, we are going to finally solve the mystery of the fluorescent lamp. Well, at least we're going to solve part of the mystery. If you remember when we shot the original video, we found that inside this fluorescent lamp, there were some rather strange things going on. We saw that when we measured the voltages, the voltages that were inside the fluorescent light fitting did not add up to the voltage that we were applying to the fluorescent lamp. Let's just cut to that footage and have a little look at that now. Please don't try this at home. So the first thing that we're interested in is we're going to have a look at what our input voltage is. So I'm going to use my Mega AVO 835 to measure the input voltage. Okay. And you can see there that we've got a value of 248 volts. So obviously we'd expect this to be 230. That's our nominal voltage. But of course we know we're allowed certain tolerances within that value. And we've got here uh, 248 it's hovering around it so we're well within the tolerance that we should be so that's our input voltage so we'll draw that onto our circuit diagram so we can see there there's our input voltage what we're going to do now is we're going to measure the voltages across the series part of the circuit so first of all we're going to measure the voltage across the choke now when we start doing this I'm going to go back to my old analog instrument so let's power the light fitting back up again and we'll have a look at the voltage across the choke here. So we can see the voltage across the choke. Uh, we're just between 120 and 130 volts there. So we're on 125 volts. So I shall put that onto the circuit diagram so we can see that there. Okay, so if I could ask my glamorous assistant to power that back up for me. Okay, so that's interesting. We were expecting to get 123 volts, okay? And what we've actually found is if we have a look at our voltmeter now, we are measuring just under 200. So we perhaps call that uh, 195, okay? So we've actually got a very, very funny reading here. If we look at our circuit diagram, we're putting in 248 volts, and then when we measure the voltage across the choke and measure the voltage across the lamp, it looks like we've got more voltage inside the circuit than we're putting into it. Now that seems like a very odd thing, and at first glance it seems to defy the laws of physics. However, there is more going on here because, of course, we are connected to an AC supply. So there's deeper things going on here. So we can see that strange behavior going on with those voltages there and how they don't seem to add up properly. We also had some issues with the current as well that were behaving in a slightly strange way, but we're gonna cover that in the next video in this series. If you need to recap on any of this material, I think it's really important that you go back and watch the original mystery of the fluorescent lamp video now so that you're fully up to speed with what was going on inside there. Now, since the initial release of that video, we've been through a long series of videos covering AC theory, and we've gathered lots and lots of information. And all of that information ended up on a worksheet that we filled in over the course of several videos. And you can see an image of that worksheet here. Hopefully, from the previous video in this series, you've got that completely filled in. We did a quick summary of that to make sure that we had all the boxes completed. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some information from that worksheet to help us solve the mystery of the fluorescent lamp. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at the circuit diagram that was produced for the fluorescent lamp in that original video. And we're going to start figuring out what's going on with these voltages and how we can get them to make sense. So let's cut to that now. So here you can see you've got the circuit diagram for the fluorescent lamp. You can see that we've got the choke here, which of course we now know when we look at the symbol for that choke, we know that that is an inductive load. And we've got the symbol representing the lamp and we can see that that is a resistive load. Now for the time being we're considering the fluorescent lamp as it is without the capacitor connected so we're just looking at the choke and the lamp connected in series with each other. So we've got our two voltages and we've got our supply voltage but for some reason these don't seem to add up to each other so how can we kind of make this make sense? Well the answer lies, the secret lies, inside the phasor diagrams. So let's have a look at our resistive load first of all. So here's our lamp and you can see that if we draw the phasor diagram underneath the lamp there, do you remember what that phasor diagram would look like? 
it's a resistive load, so current and voltage are in phase. So we can just draw the phaser diagram as it is on our sheet, and we can just fill it in underneath the circuit there. What we can then do is look across at our inductive load. Now in the inductive load, we know that current is lagging voltage. And so the phaser diagram will look something like this. Now, a key point at this stage to bear in mind is that we're looking at a series circuit. So the inductor and the resistor are connected in series with each other. Now we know from previous videos that in a series circuit, the current is constant. So however much current we put into the system, the same amount of current will appear everywhere within that system. So what that means is that the current is constant. Now because the current is constant, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna tweak our phaser diagram for the inductive load slightly by rotating it. Now you'll see as we rotate it to this position, that the current is still very much lagging the voltage. All we've done now is we've made current what we call the reference phaser. And that's a really important point because it helps us to correlate what's happening with these voltages. That's gonna to start to click things into place. So we've clearly got on the screen there, you can see our two separate phaser diagrams. Now what we want to think about is, what does the phaser diagram for the circuit as a whole look like? Well, in order to understand that, what we need to do is we need to combine the two phaser diagrams. So let's bring the resistive phaser diagram down to here like this. We'll put that there. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna lay on top of that one our phaser diagram for our inductive load. So we're gonna bring that down and we're gonna put that on top of the resistive phaser diagram. Now notice, we don't need to do anything with the currents. We don't need to add the current in the inductor to the current in the resistor because those currents are the same current. So we don't need to add those together, it's the same current. What we're really interested in now is the voltages. Look at the relationship between the voltage of the resistor, which we've now labeled up as V with an R in the subscript, and look at the inductive voltage, which we've now labeled up with a V with an L in the subscript. How would you describe the relationships between these two voltages? Well, wouldn't you say that the relationship between these two voltages is that they are out of phase with each other? We can see that there is uh, some relationship between them where they are no longer in phase. Now that's a really, really interesting and really key point because actually that helps us to understand how these two voltages inside the series circuit relate to the supply voltage that we're putting into the circuit. The way I like to illustrate this is, is this. We've got effectively two arrows that are pointing in different directions. Now imagine that these were arrows representing a force acting on an object. Let's say there's a little object at the point where the two arrows join and we're trying to pull that in two different directions with our forces. Well, which direction would that object go in? It wouldn't follow one arrow or the other exactly. What would happen is those forces would balance out and actually the object would move off in a diagonal position. Now we could map exactly how much force that object would experience by uh, completing this phaser diagram. And actually exactly the same thing's happening with our voltages. So let's do this. Let's draw a parallel line to our resistive voltage at the end of the inductive voltage arrow. So we draw a parallel line as you can see here. Now let's draw a parallel vertical line to the inductive voltage, and that's gonna go up this side here. And then, let's have a think about this. If we join the point where the two arrows meet to the point where the two parallel lines meet, we get a third arrow. Now we said if this was an object being moved by forces, that would represent the force acting on that object. We could kind of use it to figure out how far the object would move. But here, we're dealing with voltages. So what do you think this new arrow might represent? Well, surely that new arrow represents the supply voltage, the total voltage that we are applying to this system. So actually, what we need to do now is we need to modify our thinking. It's true that the resistive voltage added to the inductive voltage does not equal the supply voltage. However, when we combine the effect of those two arrows, of those two voltages, we can see that actually they give us a third voltage, which is slightly more than either one of the voltages, but actually comes to represent the total voltage in the circuit. Now, what's really interesting about this is actually we can draw this to scale and we can see what that value of the supply voltage will be. 
and we'll have a look at doing that in our next video. So from this video, we've solved the first part of the mystery of the fluorescent lamp. We've seen why those voltages did not add up inside the fluorescent lamp to give us the voltage that was being applied to the fluorescent lamp. And it's because the voltage across the choke and the voltage across the lamp are out of phase with each other. And we also saw that combining those two values would indeed give us the total voltage being applied to the circuit. So in our next video, we'll look at producing that scale drawing to show a more accurate relationship between the three voltages that we measured inside the circuit. And then we'll go on to have a look at how the current was behaving inside our fluorescent lamp. Thank you very much for watching.